Hi, my name is Eugenie and I worship regularly at St Peter's. So I've been thinking this week about mistakes and how we deal with them. What do we do when we make mistakes, especially the ones that affect others? Last week I made a mistake at work. It wasn't really serious, but I know I could have done things differently. So I wonder if some of you are a bit like me and then have sleepless nights churning over the mistake, a wrong word that's hurt someone or an action that's gone wrong or has bad consequences. I often find that mistakes can weigh on me like carrying rocks on my back. At times, those rocks just feel like they get heavier and heavier. I often find that when we've made mistakes, if we don't try and rectify them, it's a bit like, you know when you've got an orange in your fruit bowl and there's a small bruise on it and it just starts to get a bit mouldy and before you know it, it's overwhelmed the whole of the of the bowl. All the oranges have all gone yucky. And that one orange that started off just with a bit of a bruise has now gone horrible and furry. What do we do to stop the rot? What does the Bible say? Well, a few things. I'm going to read you a verse from Proverbs 28 verse 13. It says... People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Firstly, I think that we need to admit the mistakes to ourselves and then to God. We need to go before God and say sorry. This doesn't have to be long, elaborate prayers. You could use a, um, a formal written down prayer if you like. But just saying the words to God that you're sorry for the mistake you've made is really important. I would usually ask God for help as well to help sort out the mistake. The next step is usually admitting to the one's affected by your mistake, that you're sorry. The parable of the, the prodigal son is about someone who made a whooping, hurtful, selfish mistake. You can find it in Luke chapter 15, beginning at verse 11. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger son said to him, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. After a few days, the younger son got everything together and journeyed to a distant country where he squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent all he had, a severe famine swept through that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his belly with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him a thing. Finally, he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's hired servants have plenty of food? But here I am, starving to death. I will get up and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still in the distance, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. 
The son declared, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. So firstly, the son realised his mistake. He admitted to himself. He then went and admitted, admitted his mistake to his father. And he flung him on his father's mercy. The father in the parable, of course, represents God and the son, us. Us, we who always make foolish mistakes all the time and have great ideas that tend out, turn out in the end to be not a good idea at all. His father, of course, loves his son and he forgives him and is thrilled that he has realised his mistakes. I think, though, he may need to do a bit of extra repair work with his brother, who is jealous at his father's complete forgiveness of his wayward younger brother. One of the reasons why I think I get stuck in this spiral of worry over mistakes is either because I don't deal with the consequences of the mistake or sometimes as well as, I don't forgive myself. Sometimes I need to ask God's help to help me forgive myself and let me move on. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 say, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in prayer and and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Mistakes are normal. They're human. We all make them, big or small. What makes a difference is how we deal with them when they happen.